Um, Sorry. Just, no, all good. <laughs> just, just to be a secondary option to your current lender, um, let us know how we can help, right? We understand that we might not be your go-to every single time, um, but you know, being an additional option for you, um, which I'll talk about ways and, and how we can um, excel in certain areas for you, we, we would love to be that option for you. So if you wanna go to the next slide, um, Frankie. Uh, so here are the rates that we're working with today. Um, I, I pulled these this morning. So if you have somebody VA at a 640, you're looking at a 2.45%, 660, 2.35. Um, same thing with FHA, 2.375 and 2.25 on conventional. We're running a 3% on 700 credit score, 2.835, 740. I priced out my first jumbo with Robbie uh, over the over the weekend, and you know, looking at 20% down, no MI, 20% uh, down on a jumbo loan is coming in at 3.125. Um, at 11% down, it's kind of weird. It's not 10% down. It's like 10.0111. So I just put in 11%. Um, at 11% down on a jumbo. Um, 3.875 there. Um, so some of the things that I would talk about, you know, I, I do get, um, you know, clients that are coming in that may have a previous pre-approval or they've been quoted by another loan officer uh, recently. Um, whenever we get the file, I'm usually seeing that other lenders are, are easy 2.6, 2.7, let's just say, for instance, on VA, right? And the difference between our 2.45 or 2.35, especially in this market compared to their starting point with a different lender is probably the difference of about maybe twenty-five to three thousand dollars that we can apply towards closing costs if we were to match the same rate that they're getting elsewhere, right? So now, many times we're trying to drive our clients to take the lowest rate because that's something that they get for thirty years. But if you're dealing with a situation where you know short cash to close, like right now, like Quinn, Quinn's not on the list here, but we have a guy right now that's under contract. Um, he's going to pay absolutely nothing at closing. Um, and his rate that he was, you know, kind of pricing out compared to other lenders, not only were we an eighth of a point less, but we were able to um, get him a lower rate and then apply funds over to, um, to closing, right? So if you have somebody in that 640, 660 range, we have elite pricing. Be, uh, being a part of the motto network, we, we get better pricing because we're big in number, even though we're just one small branch out of San Antonio. There are 60 other uh, offices across the nation, 300 other LOs, and that's how we pull our rates and kind of get a, I guess, a group discount, if, if that's a, a good way of, of putting it. So keep us in mind for those government loans, 640 to 660, um, some awesome stuff there, and our jumbo pricing is excellent. Um, if we get into this next slide, Frankie, um, you know, kind of talk a little bit about that about it there. Working with Model Mortgage, right? Better pricing for you guys means we can maybe drive up that maximum uh, pre-approval amount. At the end of the day, right now, you know, I, I do know that with you know appraisals and and, and value of homes, uh, right now the the cash to close number can sometimes be a moving scale once we get the appraisal back. So just knowing that you can get somebody in at a lower price, and that you know potentially if it's like a VA or an FHA loan that we could go all the way up to a 2.75 and, and kick somebody back $4,500 to knock down the cost of maybe a, a appraisal that came in under value. Um, and, you know, that just pretty much keeps your, your client out of any financial burdens. It's just a win-win for you, win-win for your client. Um, when it comes to our lender, we have a main lender that out of the 60-something units that we've done so far, I would say about 90% 90, 90 of them go through a specific lender that we love to work with. Currently, right now, we're getting initial underwrites within one to two days. Um, if you're writing up a contract, that's something that I'm discussing with our realtors today is that, hey, instead of putting a 15 to 21 day you know, option period where we're going to get buyer approval, we're going to know really, really close up front within you know, 48 hours what that approval looks like from the underwriter, which kind of helps you to write a more aggressive contract, right? Um, outside of that, um, we do have options. Um, you know, outside of your standard loans. So we have some non-QM QM loans where we can do stuff for, you know, 1099 bank statement loans. Right now, Sylvia, um, she wasn't listed on there, but Sylvia and I actually have a client today that we're working with um, who's doing a bank statement loan. It's my first bank statement loan. And um, we're on pace to close uh, on Friday for this bank statement loan. So some of these, um, you know, non-traditional loans are coming back and we have more lenders out there that we can, we can draw from to provide a option 
um, you know, to, to your client. And um, outside of that, we have, we, we have certain loans that are going as low as 550 uh, on credit score. Not necessarily the type of, you know, business that I just want you to send me all of your 550 leads, um, you know, because that it is a difficult loan. They have to put 10% down other things there. But at the end of the day, being that we're a broker and we have multiple options to go through, that, that's just better options for your client, right? Um, as, in terms of leads, if you send something over to us, you can text us, you can email us, um, and we can send out some information on where you can get that information to us at. But we'll make sure to get to your leads within 24 to 48 hours and um, you know, kind of give you some feedback on where we can go from there. Uh, moving forward, um, you know, those 60 something units that we've done so far, it's been myself. Uh, I know Louise has done one. Louise is our processor um, and she is also licensed. So Louise, if, if, if you're comfortable with working with Louise, she can absolutely um, uh, do a loan for you all. We also have Tabor's brother, Tanner, who is in the, the North Texas area, who is doing loans for us. He's probably knocked about knocked out three of them out on his own. Um, but I, I'm probably sitting somewhere around 60 personally, right, in loans so far this year. And with, with the new business that we're getting, we feel we, we're happy and we're content with where we're at, but we, we want to strive to the next level. So we are going to bring on two new LOs, um, hopefully with they've passed their tests and hopefully with um, getting the state to approve and, and get them on um, hopefully within the next uh, month um, to six weeks that they're on board. And um, you guys can engage with them and, and send us over some more business um, there. And we'd be happy to, to support you in that regard. I think we might have one more slide, Frankie. Um, yeah, if you, sure if, you, if you can go yeah. over it in like 30 in seconds. 30 I just seconds. wanted to yeah, show this sure. from your presentation. Yeah, so we did a presentation um, last week and it just kind of talked about, and these are the conversations that we're having with your clients, just looking at, you know, I have a lot of clients that are saying, hey, I don't want to pay over asking, like, it's not fair. Like, I, I don't want to bring an extra 20, 30, 30 K. Right. But if you take a look at the interest rates, we walk, we walk through it in a class and you take a look at the interest rates from today, because on, on a conventional loan, we're sitting at around 2.8. But in 2019, if you were buying that house for 320 at 4%, the difference that you were going to pay, I think once we, um, well, you can see the all in payment is about, I don't know, 70 to $80 less. Uh, per month in 2021 on a $30,000 more house. And then the cost savings, I think when we broke it down, it was somewhere between 40 and $50,000 of the difference that your, your client at $46,970 that your client would pay in this particular scenario, right? So we are taking the time to walk through um, and give your, your client the confidence to purchase today. And again, the, the rates that we're drawing from that we can get compared to the market um, it, it really helps to, to create and make that story and provide that confidence to them. So again, if there's anything that we can do to help, here's our contact info, man. Thank you for saving me there, Frankie. Um, please reach out and, um, let, let us know how, how we can, you know, create a partnership and just continue to grow, um, with this office. We really appreciate every single one of you. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. All right. Thank you, Josh. Guys, we are going to wait. Sorry, till the end of the but Karen knows. So just so you know, we're just going to keep on going. So. Yeah. Um, we did want to mention Mona in office. Do you want to say anything about Mona being here? Uh, no, just another resource like Mono is. Um, it, and it's a broker model, which insurance is much more apt. Uh, almost all insurances are going to that model now. So she has a wide variety of products. And Vendors that she pulls from, you know, similar to Mono, actually much more extensive than Mono. Um, I think we have about 50 different insurance companies that we can write policies with. So she's right down the hall and available for um, the same aspect. We're not, and I think you all know how we run the office. We don't shove anyone down anyone's throat or anything like that. They're there to do a good job and have good service, and they're available as a resource too for questions, as well as for business. Obviously, we'd love to have the business too, but we're there, there for a resource resource for all of you to use too. So uh, she's very nice, take care of your clients and you know, have a, a good array of products too for them. All right. All right, so we always like to go through um, our top agents each month and a few other stats. So um, I usually go back three months, so we're gonna start with May. Um, so our top, I'll go through them all and then I do on my clock. Um, our top agent for listings for Hausman was Stacy Robinson, one of the, I don't know if it was that much of a month before the first time on the list. So maybe you should. Yeah. Um, you've been on several times now. Yes. 
And then Hardy Oak was um, Puppet Thomas, teens was Zach Taylor group, pending was Tammy Cooper, um, at Hausman, Hardy Oak was Puppet Thomas, and teens was the Christy Rupp team. Commissions, Hausman was Charles King, Hardy Oak was Puppet Thomas, teens was Christy Rupp team. And then sales volume, Hausman was Tammy Cooper, Hardy Oak was Puppet Thomas, and teens was Christy Rupp. And then for June this year, listings in Housman was Dan Barry, Cardio was Denise Rice, teams was Zach Taylor Group, pending was Dan Barry, Peppa Thomas, and the Christy Rock team. Commissions was Tammy Cooper, Peppa Thomas, and the Christy Rock team. And then sales volume was Tammy Cooper, Peppa Thomas, and the Christy Rock team. You want to remind everyone we take these stats from what you put into SkySlope. <laughs> because we can't, so if it's not a SkySlope and you're like, why is it on the list? Okay, we get it. Uh, we have no idea. <laughs> and part of that well, is. Well, we feel bad if it's something that doesn't, should have got it, so you don't. Yeah. Just because someone comes to me like, well, I can't have this huge sale, but then it's got something that doesn't show up there. I'm like, I got three days. Well, <laughs> Part of that too is, you know, if we looked at the MLS, your non-MLS listings wouldn't be in there. So we really have to have a place where we can look at it. Usually the fifth of the month. <laughs> of the, like, I usually volume. don't do stats till the fifteenth. So, mm -hmm. but that's, there is a few. We try to make it. The I'm gonna say the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, why I mean, that's why people like, well, why don't you put stats down on the first? Well, but then it would be even more stupid that everyone else doesn't have it in there. So I wait till the fifteenth to try to make sure everyone that's signed gets in there, so we get as accurate as we can. Um, and then in July, um, all the Hausman agents, this is like their first time being on Lisa. So congratulations um, to Monique, um, who it's her first time for listings. And then we have Peppa Thomas at Hardy Oak, the Garza home team for teams. Um, for pending, Shane Bryce, congratulations, Hardy Oak, Peppa Thomas, and teams the right choice group. Commissions, Quinn Kruger, um, Hardy Oak, Peppa Thomas, and Teams Christy Rock Team, and then Housing, Quinn Kruger, Hardy Oak, Peppa Thomas, and Teams Christy Rock Team. Um, we do, so every quarter, Remax of Texas releases the top 20 teams and the top 20 agents. Everyone always asks me how many people are in Remax of Texas for the San Antonio Council. I believe it's around 400. I don't know the exact number of teams, um, but you know, these offices include uh, Fredericksburg and Bronxville's, um, you know, all over San Antonio. Not, so that's why it's really great when we make these top 20 lists. Um, so you can see we have the Christy Rep team, Cold Realty Group, the Garza Home team, and the House to Home team make the uh, teams list. And for the individuals, Peppa Thomas, Charles King, Tammy Cooper, Diana Nelson Pedraza, Michelle Moore, Stacey Robinson, Ron Mercinger, and Nellie Burrell. Did once again for the quarter put us in the number one remax office for the quarter. Um, and then for NARAP, we did have um, five people make the NARAP, or um, four individuals and three teams make the NARAP group. Um, Robbie Medina, Leslie Gutierrez, Tony Martinez, Peppa Thomas, uh, the Right Choice team, um, Casa Lumen group, and then Garza Home team all made NARAP for last year. We are the loudest table of cheering everyone <laughs> on our <laughs> um, And I did want to address this just so everyone understands. So um, when I do post on our social media, which by the way, if you make a club level, just message me because I, I have to manually check this. I don't know that you need an executive unless I take time to go through and check every single agent. Which I have spreadsheets, but it's still lower. So, um, just so you know, these are the club levels. These are not, don't have anything to do with you guys capping out because they are based on January through December. So, um, it's based on those commissions. This is what Remax uh, LLC reports every year. This is how they give out those awards. So, executive club, 100%, um, you'll see a lot of those. Now, the one we want to um, also mention is Remax Gold Club. We don't mention that on social media or anything, but when we get awards each year, 
that is one that Remax um, North San Antonio started because we were kind of in that time, 2008, where the jump between 240 um, not or like 100 to 249, it's a very big jump, and we want to make sure we recognize those who were in the middle. So we started um, Remax Bowl Club. Um, so you can see each of those club levels. And then there are career award levels. We actually have a couple agents knock on wood who will be getting those this year, um, um, who will reach Hall of Fame. So Hall of Fame means that over your course of your career with Remax, you did at least a million dollars in commissions. Um, some of you moved from other Remax offices, they count your prior commission. So it's all added up with your career with Remax. Um, and then lifetime achievement uh, is 3 million, but you have to have been here for at least seven years. So we have a few people in that one as well. Um, and you'll just meet them. So it says like, come on. Any questions? And, oh, I should mention, you can check these in um, the Remax.net portal. If you ever want to know where to go, just come see me, I'll show you, but it's under the My Account um, little app logo. Is that commission? Yes. Okay. Yeah, all awards from the natural based on okay. Um, I added in some updates from the broker owner conference. I don't know if you want to mention anything as well. But whatever I miss. Yeah. Um, the Bouge impersonation. Um, so with your websites and your CRMs, if you want me to help you. Now with your websites, there is a place where you can go on and turn on impersonation. And then every time you change your password or something, you don't have to give it to me. But if you want me to help you with those things, you do, I'll um, send out a video that walks you through how to turn that on. Um, and then Remax University, right now they are in the middle of updating it. Um, I'm excited about it because we'll be able to add our own videos from the brokerage into Remax University and have learning tracks uh, so if you're looking for how to send a message through daily dashboard, instead of going through my emails, you can go right to Remax University and you'll be able to see those type of things. So right now it's only available for the brokerage because we are getting our learning track set up. Um, but it's a really nice layout. You can watch it. It's mobile friendly. Um, I'm simple. So um, there is the Remax Health Insurance. There is an enrollment period every single month. I know health insurance can be a lot. It is. I believe it's Aetna, um, and is it expensive? All health insurance is expensive, but honestly, compared to other health insurances, especially ones like that are given by uh, nine to five jobs where you have a salary, it's very comparable. So um, check that. Somebody that like actually knows, because I read when it first came out that you had to be your own employee, well, you all are independent contractors, so right. it's only for, so like I can't go sign up for it, but all of the independent contractors can. And you don't have to like employ yourself. Yeah. Um, I'll have to ask them about that. Right. Yeah, we have, we'll have to check into that part. I don't believe so. Yeah, no, you don't have to be an LLC like a company. Okay. So I, I mean, yeah, we'll double check that. Sure, but... And you email the contact information. Yes. Do you have anything you want to add? Well, it's just, I mean, they're still working on a bunch of plans and stuff like that going forward as far as commission splits and stuff like that uh, for the brokerages too. You know, that way, like, you know, um, a lot of uh, brokers don't really care for teams because you don't really make a lot of money. But the thing is, they're trying to work splits in to where it's convenient for everybody um, across the board. You know, so, um, but yeah, they're, they're working on it. Uh, president of the company had a big old black eye because he felt weird. Um, so it's kind of funny. He had a big old like he walked out wearing uh, one of the, the guy's wife's sunglasses at, at the brokerage you know, for POC. So it's kind of weird. But uh, no, it's it's kind of cool going to those events like that because everybody, it's everything is very like the remax, remax, remax. You know, and, um, I think we're trying to get a group together for uh, our four. Yes, I have those dates. And uh, and Frankie, I think it's going to be good. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um. They do add, they have been mentioning a lot from LLC first IO. I'm not going to go through all of this. I am going to send out this presentation so you guys can go back through it and read it if, if you'd like, especially some of this information. 
But if you do want to try first step um, IO out, it is free for the first, I think it's 90 days. And then after that, it is subscription based. So it is like a $500 a year fee. However, um, one new listing off of that is going to cover that, right? So this program, really what it's doing is it's basing it off of your sphere and the contacts you already have and encouraging you to contact those people. Um, but it also works with some data analytics, which it goes in and says, oh my gosh, your uncle has started to look at homes on Zillow, we're going to suggest this person for you to call, as well as this person's been in their home for seven years, they might be thinking about when or something. So yeah, do you think about how many contacts you've had on your phone? That's what it does. It does. So when you have hopefully a system in place to contact everybody with this stuff, it takes all that information along with analytics on the web and spyware or whatever, or cloud, or whatever. But basically, you get all that and uh, comes up and says, hey, this person should be talking. So just a reminder. Yeah. And it's free for 90 days. So, I mean, why not try to get, if you get one deal on that in the first 90 days and decide maybe it's not free, that's fine. But hey, who doesn't want one more deal? Who doesn't want to more listening? For sure. But just like with everything, if you're going to download it, you got to use it for work. Yeah. Right. It's not going to. It's not going to tell you. Pretty you need to go check. It. It's yeah. pretty automated. That's right. Yeah. It's not like you have to put a lot of work in. Um, this just kind of goes through everything. I'm not going to go through, but just five points about first IO. Um, it really just focuses on reconnecting with those people that you should already have connections with. Um, and it does give you some prompts of things to talk to them about, whether you text them, email them, call them. Um, it just encourages you to keep on engaging with those people um, and build those referrals. Uh, it does let you know, by the way, if you missed an opportunity. So like if you had a client, have clients who ends up selling their home to someone else. I had a... Um, a uh, local owner here that is not in this office call me one day um, and say, oh my gosh, I, that app makes me so ticked off because it's always showing me how many listings I lost to other people. But if you were using it and you were contacting other people, you'd stay top of mind, you wouldn't lose that. So. It looks like a $3 million listing, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I'm just, and this I'll go through a little bit quickly, but we wanted to, a few of us went to Coach's Corner with Derek James, um, and they are in Remax University. You can watch a lot, a lot of Coach's Corner webinars and videos, um, and they will have some learning tracks specifically for some of these coaches. So these were some of the takeaways that we had. Um, one thing is put a post transaction plan in place. How many of you, once the transaction is done, do you have a plan to follow up with your past clients? A few. Yeah, and but so many don't, right? We think that the transaction ends once it's closed. Um, but after the sale, one of the numbers that stood out to me was every client can be worth $117,000 lifetime worth of that client because they can refer you, they can use you again, et cetera. So that's the average, um, how much they're worth. You just have to have that plan in place. Have a plan of consistent marketing, consistent branding, helps out your with Remax, but also do video, do other things. If you don't have a plan, come to class tomorrow, let's get a plan for you in place. Um, there are were great ideas for creating listings. And if you go onto REU, you can watch some of Jared James's um, videos about ideas on how to create listings, but one really simple one you all can do right now is every time you have a buyer, you should be getting on your phone and saying, I have a buyer, they are looking in this area for, for three bedrooms, two baths, this number of square feet. If you know anyone that is even considering listing their home, let me know. And then you're not only showing the value to your buyer, you're showing value to potential um, sellers. Grant, you have to let more people in the meeting? Maybe. I don't show me. Yeah, if you just click um, participants. Uh, scroll up. It looks like everyone's in there. Okay, I just didn't want someone to be. No, I don't see anyone. Okay, all right. Up. Um, maybe in the, does anyone say anything in chat that I need to? I don't know if I need to. Is everyone hearing me okay? 
Okay. Hopefully you can hear me now. Okay. It's You're good. Up, okay. It picks up pretty, pretty well, though. Yeah, I'll go back one. I'll just mention, well, I probably can think what it was. Um, oh, otherwise, wait, hold on, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, as much as we all hate emails, emails actually do work. There's plenty of proven stats that just by emailing, occasionally people will open them. So if you need help putting out newsletters or anything like that, and then build more capacity. Capacity. If you are maxed out, you should be getting a TC or considering it. So come talk to us. TCs on average save eight to 10 hours of time per transaction. Um, and he always gives, every time he talks about TCs, Jared gives the doctor analogy. Would you want to go to a doctor who welcomed you at the reception, took your vitals, took your weight, checked you out? made you give the payments, did every single thing instead of just seeing you because what he should be focusing on is his patients. The part that he's the best at is diagnosing you is he doesn't need to be dealing with everything else. So just like doctors, you guys need to put those other people in that can help leverage your business. Um, these are really quick notes. Some people have been asking me about Move Guru. If you don't know what that is or you don't remember, what that is is a series of emails that goes out every time you have a buyer or seller. I think they're mostly for buyers, but you have to have the email for the buyer in Skyslope. It bases it off your closing date. And so three days before closing, they get 25% off of Papa John's. Um, coupon and it's all branded for you. Your name, your info's in there. All you had to do is put your buyer's info into Skyzo. Automatically does it. It does it. Um, you might need to have your closing date, at least an estimate, one in there, estimate of one in there too. Uh, free lawn care estimate, set of air filters. These are just some of the things they have in there. SAE and CE. If you do not know when your License renews every year. Mary Beth told me something I had no idea. Do any of you know where it is on your statement? Every month, if you look at your Remax North San Antonio statement, they're up top, or at least maybe within 90 days, it says this is when your license renews. So it tells you if you're getting close. So check your statement. If it's not up there, that means you're not that close. But I saw some at 78 days. I saw some at 15 days. It tells you when you're up for renewal. So that should trigger you. Oh my gosh, have I completed my CE or SAE? If you are at SAE level within your first two years, you cannot do an extension. You can't pay extra to do an extension. So please get your SAE done. Please get your CE done. Um, we do now have rmnsa.vce shop dot com so if you want online learning uh, that is an option august 25th only you can save 40 percent off but the rest of the month there's a code to save 30 percent off i'll sit send those out as well and this because i know some people are weary of um, online schools i just wanted to show you this graphic i thought it was neat the ce shop who we co-branded a little real estate education site with they have a um, highest passing rate in the state for real estate classes. So as much as we love champions and they're very close, they're like second, people do pass online. You can be educated online. Don't be scared to do it online. Although in person, when they're cheaper and all the coupons. Yes, and we will send those coupons out. So, all right, are you ready? Ready? Okay. Yes, <laughs> You get to talk about the fun stuff. Yeah, right. Don't be sued. Don't do this. Don't do, do you want this clicker? Um, can I make you do it? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'll start with some funner stuff. Is that a word? Um, I always tout um, a couple things that you should be reading, but just to remind you, probably tired of me reminding you, but everyone should be reading this. You know, it's very short, but it's all usually good to the point of what's going on, things that are happening. And that's what you want to go to the next one. Yep. Thank you. Um, and that's where I'll put, and you don't, I just put this in here to read later. I'm not going to read through it, but things like this, this is what, as an example. So 
since they changed the option period to where you can pay it to title, the question was, well, what happens when I want to extend that option period? Can I pay that money to title? And this is an annoying, annoying answer, but no, you can't. Then the second time around, it has to go to the seller. So just to make everyone aware of that. I mean, a lot of times you work it out with the agent and still take it to title or do something different. Just so you know, technically, that, that has to go to the seller if you extend the option and pay an additional fee. If you agree, my email like to delay the receipt of that extended payment like if it's five dollars right you can i mean I, I always try to stick with the contract but i i always say to someone who would ask me that i would say as long as we have it in writing and the, the agent has agreed with that i'm, I'm comfortable with that so contractually it, it probably wouldn't hold up because that's not what the contract says that's a verbal agreement outside the contract, but I've never seen someone who puts in a text that I agree to that then go back and say, no, you know, we're not going to give you that. So I've never seen that happen. And hopefully never, no one would ever do that to you on there. But that's the type of thing that it's in the magazine, you know, those type of articles. Um, and when you read it, if, if something doesn't make sense, or you're not sure how to apply it. That's when you want to call me, you know, because I know everything. And I'll say, I'll call you back in five minutes and then I'll go make sure I know the answer and then I'll call you back. <laughs> No, I mean, I am careful that way. I always want to make sure I'm giving you the right advice and everything. But sometimes they'll say something, you know, especially with like the appraisal addendum, no matter how many times they go through it and stuff, it seems like there's always that question about that addendum, no matter what on there. So things like that, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm here for. So um, make sure my, my best form of contact is texting to get my attention. You know, I mean, you're welcome to call, but if you, if you send me an email or do something like that, just text me and say, hey, Rich, I sent you an email. Could you look that over? Um, not that I ignore my email, but that's just the, you know, we all know texting is just the easiest way to get someone's attention to just let me know what's going on. So I don't miss it. And I go look for it, that type of thing. But yeah, that's something you should be reading. Um, now, this is a paid subscription, but it's another magazine you really should be reading or newspaper, the San Antonio Business Journal. Because as agents, you know, you want to be as knowledgeable as you can, not just about, uh, you know, this is, this is really more contracts and, you know, the market and our business aspect. But this is what's going on in San Antonio. Um, like right now, the, the rival to Tesla is thinking about coming to uh, San Antonio. So things like that. Um, is it Rip Rivian? Rivier? Something like that. So they're another electric car maker. So things like that that you just should know about. I mean, just different projects are going on. This issue has the top 25 oldest um, attractions in San Antonio. So that's even something good to know for your clients things like that but it really tells you what's going on business-wise with companies corporations and what's going on. and they're both you know it's a short magazine it's not like you're reading you know 100 pages but it's to the point it tells you what's going on uh, the last one uh, is a tech i don't know you all get this automatically right yeah. i mean this is a good one just about our market so it goes in depth on different markets like this one had an article about the market at the coast um, you know what's going on there, the rise in prices there, you know, similar to what we're having here. So that's that's the third one I would say. And none of these take all day. But you really, if you read those three, you're going to know a lot. You know, it, it's a lot of good information. It's all to the point um, on there. So I think those are three that are real important. But, uh, and this is another article out of there. That was just my second example um, appraisal waivers. And I, we're not going to go into detail here. I think we've probably beaten that to death to, to some extent but certainly if anyone has a question let me know and that and the point here is they they um, made a mistake on how explaining it um, so they, they redid this article to make sure that they explained it correctly and what, what i will say about it is you just want to make sure you're working with that lender that your client understands the ramifications of the different parts of the appraisal waiver so they're not surprised when people get sideways it's when they don't you didn't set them up for the expectation of what's going to happen that's when deals go wrong is when they're expecting one thing and they haven't been told the proper uh, things that, to expect that if people like to know what to expect i mean they might not be happy with things but if you gave them that right set that right expectation when that time comes and you you know you said it's going to appraise in this range and you're pretty close or if, you, if they just assume oh well it's going to appraise for the full price and then it's fifty thousand lower you know they're, they're going to be as a shock to their system and that's where it's important for you all to do cmas and be as accurate as you can and make sure you're talking to the lender 
no matter what type of loan it is, to see what the capabilities of that buyer are and how much extra cash that's going to be if a certain situation occurs and making sure they know that, you know, that everyone's on that same page, that there's no shock at the end. Well, I, this is out of left field. I have no idea I'm going to need 41000 You mean I have to have the down payment and make up for the difference in appraisal? You know, you want to just make sure you're, you're giving them good details on that. No, I, I brought them here. I brought them here for the next slide. Uh, oh, escalation clause was another one that was article that was in there that I've been asked about. Um, you know, everyone's looking for things that are outside the box. I mean, but as you can see from right from the start of this, we're not allowed to write escalation clause. That is considered practicing law. An attorney could do that, um, but you have to understand what that means to. It sounds all pretty like, well, I can guarantee I get the house. I'll just put an escalation clause. No matter what the highest offer is, I'll offer $1,000 more, right? And I'll get it. Well, but just escalation clause also has to have a cap. So what you're really doing is trying to get the house under your maximum cap. So if you, if you say, I'll pay, my offer is 240 and I'll do an escalation clause up to 250. So yes, if someone had an offer in there for 240 or 241, you may get that house. But as soon as someone offers 251, well, you're, you're shot out of the water anyway. So it's not like the holy grail that some people think it is on there. So basically, instead of going in at 250, which is your true top dollar that you'll pay, you try to get it for a little less with an escalation clause. So just so you know how to explain that to your client, they may hear that from other states because other states do use it more readily and their agents can actually write them uh, here you know, in Texas, as you, as you can read there, you're not allowed and it has to be done by an attorney. But they're, they're really not, you know, if, they're, if you're going to go your max, you know, that, that, and that's what our market's set up to do. You just, you know, do what you can and you, you try to get down that way. Well, right, that's where it gets messy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. And then that's one of the reasons they, they don't allow us to do that. Here. Things are basically happening without actually knowing it. I mean, it's right. you're at least moving yes. so you have to. Have this communication with yeah. your client. And our our, um, well, our contracts are not set up for any kind of notification. So you would have no way to verify anything. So basically you're putting in an escalation clause, you're giving them what your max is. What is the chances that's going to be with the, yeah, right? So I mean, you know, not to be cynical, but I think but those are reasons why it's to, they say not to do it because there's too many holes in it to, to how it works. Um, oh, just wanted to go over. And I, I know all you mostly know this, but this is the seller disclosure that we all use. This one good, this one bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good? <laughs> they're, both, they're both acceptable. You know, they're not, there's nothing illegal about them, but this one really tells you nothing, which you've all seen this. So we wanna make sure that we're using this one. And, and more so than just saying that, is the importance of, in this market is people are, are rushed, they're paying a premium and everything. Disclosure is becoming very important. You know, you'll, you're, the E&O companies are already um, bracing for a lot of E&O claims in the next 12 to 24 months because someone is rushed, they paid 30,000 over, and now like, hey, my inspector said this AC was okay. Yes, it was working as, should be performing. And three days later, like it breaks. Well, that's very unfortunate, but the inspector's job is really just to say what's working right now. Mm -hmm. So disclosure and inspection, those things go hand in hand. A good seller that discloses everything, but also you gotta make sure that inspection wise, even though the seller may not do a lot, you wanna make sure you, you're you even more aggressive on inspections. Now, obviously it's easy for me to say you can't be blowing deals by inspecting so many things, but if the, seller has a certain issue and you've all seen it with sellers they're very concerned about something you want to do more inspections not so much that the seller's going to pay for anything but just so that again the seller knows what to expect now because a, a inspector may say that ac is working as performed right so in the mind of the buyer it's like well the ac is good an ac company will come in and say oh yes it's working as performed but it's probably got three months left of life because of this this and this so you can get a you, yeah you can get a very different response from different vendors. So you just wanna be careful on the seller's disclosure. You wanna disclose everything, make sure your seller understands that that's liability protection for them. And then also on the buyer side, making sure you're still doing all your inspections 
um, not to try to get more and more things done by the seller, but just to set your buyer up that they know the house. You know, that's important. You know, there, again, there's not all these surprises. Well, I didn't know the AC only had a few months left and this plumbing issue and, you know, things that happened. And I paid 50000 over asking, and you're telling me now I got to replace the AC now on that. Good. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Good. So if you're a buyer's agent and you get one of those short form disclosures, there's really nothing you can do about it. There, there's not. Yeah. yeah. I hate it so. because the utility information is missing. There's like 50% of the information is really Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, the other one too, though, this one is good. I mean, there is a lot. Seller's disclosure. I mean, I get that question a lot, just so people know that. And again, that's just a positive thing on the listing side. The more you can disclose, the better. That's more protection for your seller if they disclose everything. And I think I'll make oh, it. No, Is that? I didn't have a slide um, Oh, the other thing I meant to bring was I just want to make sure everyone knows there is the um, seller's disclosure update form. Have you all used that? So once they do the seller's disclosure, that seller's disclosure is done at the time like of the list, right? So that's kind of dated then. So during the process, now, you know, right now things are selling so fast, it doesn't apply a whole lot. But if you find out something, you should be updating it with that form. So they don't have to do a whole new seller's disclosure. And really it's better not to because that's kind of time stamped at that time. That was what they knew about the house at that time. So, you know, three weeks later, they found out, you know, there was termites or a flood, or I forgot about a roof repair, then I'm going to do that form and attach it. It, it updates the seller's disclosure. So that would. Yes. And um, what is it called? Let me see. I'm sure. Does it just update the seller's disclosure? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Or seller's disclosure. We can cut it out after this. Yeah. I did a print. Yeah. yeah, to have to redo a whole one is a pain. Do you have a contract and you do an inspection and then take it out? So, yeah, you would use that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's still, it's going to protect your sellers. I mean, most of the things on an inspection aren't have to be on the disclosure, but there can be some things. And then, it, you know, that can get hairy too, because sometimes the opinion, people don't agree with the opinion of the inspector too. So, so yeah, attached. yeah, right. So that's going to be attached to so that would cover in that way too. That's uh, if you have a seller's tool for $10, you do look. That's it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, if you have that seller's shield right. program, uh, I haven't used seller's shield for a lot, except maybe a couple of times. Okay. But both of those times was electronically used by the seller. Sure. So I think, you know, they did the whole process through seller shield. Just, I sent them yep. the link and they just go ahead and Fill out. Yep. But if you don't have a set of stone filled out in person, physically, is there a way to somehow upload that to the seller's closure or get that shield on that particular seller's closure? Yeah, you can. Well, you can still get the seller shield coverage even if they fill it out. Now you're missing the advantage to seller shield because it goes through step by step and tells you don't forget about this, be careful about this. So everything they tell you that you can't do, like you're not supposed to coach or have them help them fill it out. That's what Seller Shield does. They go on electronically and it'll say, you know, about the roof and they'll say, remember, here's the things that you would have to disclose. But you can still get the coverage and do it if they manually fill it out too. I don't know. How do you, like, do you, do you, I don't think you have to, up, does anyone know that you have to upload it, upload it to Seller Shield to get coverage if you do it manually? I don't know the answer. I'd have to check on that. But I know you can get, you can still get it. Yeah, I don't think that prohibit, prohibits you. Yeah, in any way. And you, and, you, and you should use it. I mean, it's a good coverage. You know, the more we can get sellers to do that. But are you, you guys use that all the time, right? Yeah, so. you, um, we have a rep. So whenever somebody fills it out manually, we just email it to the rep and they put all the information. Oh, okay. So they don't have to go online to fill it out. Oh, they don't have to go online to do anything. Okay. okay. And the rep is just for everyone in San Antonio. Is that like one rep for everyone? Um, yeah, it's, yeah. Our yeah. It's, it's, oh, okay. it's the rep I've been using. Since. Okay. 
If you don't mind, I'll, I'll get the. Uh, what else do you have anything on open houses? On open houses? Oh, yeah. I did not put that in. Oh, is that left over maybe? Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, everyone's aware of what open house permits are. You have to, within the city, have the permit on your sign. So we order them just kind of as needed when you need them. Um, they are yearly based on when we first order them. So, like, if you order them now, I think. I, I don't. I don't know when our anniversary date. Is. Yeah. So if you ordered them now, they would only be good through October. Unfortunately, that's just the way they work. What's that? Well, I, has anyone had their signs picked up? It has. Oh, you have. Oh, okay. You had them. Yeah, finished. And do they take them? And you don't get them. Back? Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, so yeah. I mean. So they, a little aside to that, Leon Valley. I held an open house there, and Leon Valley is separate. From rest of San Antonio. You can't have a house like any. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Not with a permit. Not with okay. Like, I would do their office. Grab a lot of stuff. So one sign. <laughs> That'll look there. That's it. Okay. You can use your rematch board or whatever. Put it in your card. But... Just on um, I, I, I call it a Google follower. Yeah. A um, couple other things just on contracts that just again from questions I get all the time. When a contract um, is sent out and executed, when it's executed, it is a contract. It doesn't matter if you ever take the earnest money money or you ever take the option money, you have a contract in order for that contract to no longer exist, it has to be terminated. No money has to ever exchange hands. Now, there's other consequences of that money not being um, given with the contract. And we're seeing this because people are going crazy, putting multiple offers in, signing them, and all that stuff. So, so from the seller side of it, the only out they have is if you don't take the earnest money there within the three days, then the seller can terminate the contract. From the buyer side, if you do have an option period and it is executed, and executed meaning that it is signed, executed and returned to all parties. So if you have, let's say your buyer sent in an offer and everyone said, oh, it's all great. And you're waiting for the seller to sign it. And but before they send it back to you, you notify them you were withdrawing it and they can't sign it, execute it, sending it and say, no, we had a contract. You withdraw it before it was executed. So just know that you can do that because I know in some instances it gets things like that happen where the you know, your buyer saying, hey, I want to move on, you know, can, what can we do to stop this? Now, if you can't stop and you've already received it, hopefully you have an option period, they should pay that option and terminate based on the option period. Because that's the next question. What if I, you know, I'm just going to terminate? Well, what are you going to terminate on if you're not going to, if you don't have an option period, then it gets more sticky. Um, what if they terminate within that option period, but it's not within those three days and they still have not paid the earnest money and the option, and then they don't want to pay the option. Well, yeah, right, they would be. I mean, depending right. on how much money that is and what is it worth going after, and they would be in default of the contract then at that point because you can't terminate under that option and not pay the money. So I've seen that happen, and we've seen that happen. Now, you know, we've seen option money go way up too sometimes, so now it can be more significant because you could have a two, five hundred, or thousand, or fifteen hundred dollar option fee. So now, if you get cold feet and want to terminate right away, don't take that money. I mean, you'd have to basically you'd have to sue them at that point. You know, there's no easy way to make them pay that money on there. So I know most of you probably do this. Uh, I think normally the agents now don't put in active option until you get the money. I don't know if all of you do that. I mean, technically you're supposed to change uh, when you have a contract. Technically, by MLS rules, you're supposed to change it within 48 hours. And normally the money's in, so it all works like that, but if it does get extended past that and they're not depositing their money, you know, um, I don't have an issue with not, you know, making it an active option yet, because that can look messy it's just to other buyers if you do that and then someone opts out, that type of thing. The other part with the contract too, if you make any change on a contract and send it back, that is a counter offer. Like I know it's, you know, when we're trying to get things done so quickly, you don't want to do that, right? Oh, well, they missed this. I'm going to change it, send it back to you. Well, you've now made a counteroffer. They have to sign it. 
And then the last signer is, is when it gets executed and sent back to you. So if you do have a buyer and something like that, I mean, I know everyone wants to get it under contract right away. If you have an option period, you know, get it under contract and do an amendment or something like that. If it's nothing real major, maybe you call the agent, just, hey, we've executed, but hey, this was wrong. We'll, we'll handle that before the end of the option period because you still have some leverage there. If you don't have an option, then you've got to think about it a little bit more how significant that change is. You know, if it's just something like a name or a middle initial, then I, I get it executed and do an amendment. I'm not going to wait because, you know, we've all probably all had it happen at this point where someone all of a sudden the seller gets a cash offer of 10,000 more. And they're like, yeah, see you your offer. So, you know, time is of the essence. You want to get things signed, but just know that, you know, you just can't scribble on a contract and change it. Those, those are counter offers when you do that. Um, let's see. Okay. I think what's our next slide there? I feel like that's. Posted. Okay. Um, any questions from anybody? I know I feel bad. I don't know if we're handling the Zoom participants as well as in here, but I, I want to say one thing. Yeah, I am really excited that there, I, I didn't know if we were going to have five people or 10 or 20, but it's great to see this many of you here. And uh, I do want to say I'm super proud of how everyone here has handled just this whole situation from the beginning of COVID to now. I mean, our office is doing thriving. You guys are doing great work. I know getting transactions is more difficult now than ever, you know, especially with buyers. And it, it's, you know, I'll use Josh's example though. I should have had a slide for this though. Your average sales price is going up. So even though it's harder to get them closed, you're getting more money at the end, right? Because the average price is going up, just like the interest rate example, like in reverse. But no, I, I mean, you guys have done just a great job of working hard. We have a, just a wonderful office, the service we give people and the people that come back, our past clients, it's just remarkable. So I'm just proud of everybody and want to thank everybody for that. I, I do want to say this, Frank, I was hoping that Frank would bring this up. Go ahead. <laughs> I want you to say it because I don't know the numbers. Oh, but to me, and I'll get closer to the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, between January and July of 2020 versus 2021, our sales volume, and I know sales volume is up for a lot of offices, but remember we, um, we are up 23% year over year. So, uh, That's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Happy hour. <laughs> He's going to go over that. Well, yeah, obviously, we lost two big teams. Right. We yeah. lost two big teams. Yeah. And the average sales price, it did go up a lot, but it only went up to like it was like 19% year from that point as well, right? Yeah. And we still exceeded that average sales price. You know, we're up 23%, the average sales price up 19 and we lost two teams. I think that says a lot about the rest of us here yeah. that we're able to pick up that <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Now, seeing how many people are here, she will be talking about some happy hours. So it looks like looks like we're ready to get together. So we're excited to do that. Okay. So we're working on. We're, we will have more to come, but here's just a couple things happening. Oh, no, I have to put that again. Well, it's that when I clicked into the. That's pretty good with no bonuses, though. Nobody gets bonuses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lower commission. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I, I know you guys have hopefully noticed, but instead of doing the uh, birthday lunches at a restaurant, we've been doing food trucks. If you have a birthday or work anniversary in August, we do have a Mexican food truck coming on the 25th. Um, so come to that and we do have a list. We just tell them your name and uh, the office covers that. Um, September, I actually have three. And the first one is one that's returning. Y'all can read it. The second <laughs> one is Panini Queens, but it is really good. Anyway, Panini Queens, and we have had Flat Rock, Texas. They do uh, like burgers and stuff. So if you have a birthday or anniversary in um, September, pick one of those to come from. Um, August 24th, that's next week, we are doing a Learn from the Pros. We are going to try to keep doing those monthly again, where we have a panel of current agents that can just talk to you about things. We're going to do our first one on short-term rentals, so whether that's, you know, one in San Antonio or only a property in Corpus, we have Sandy Set, so if you want to, please come to that 1030, April 24th, we will have lots of things as well. Um, September 2nd. There, I had multiple people say, I didn't want to plan this unless I had at least like eight to 10 agents. So a lot of you said, 
you would take a dog track class. So on September 2nd at 9.30, it is a three hour contract class with Old Republic title. And now that you have to have those three hours of contract um, required, this satisfies that requirement. So put that in your calendars. This will not be on Zoom because it's Old Republic teaching in person. So please try to attend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. No, if you just want to come to it just for the class, you do not have to pay for the seat. Yeah. Um, is your date? Has your date already come? I don't know. I don't know how that works. That's the question. So the question is, and Rich, I don't know if you know this. So if you already did. Your CE for contract so would for everything. Will the three hours count towards the next one? Probably not. Well, well, it's in that period. period. Oh, it's in June. Oh, yeah. Yes. Every, every you always have to do every yeah, renewal two three years. hours, of, every two years, three hours of contract. We just can't front load an hour. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we do have, we are starting momentum again, September 7th. We really just want to do it in person because um, we want to make sure that people are getting the material, that you are committed to like actually incorporating some of the things you're learning um, because we're not just teaching this so that you guys can have something interesting to listen to. We're teaching it because for a lot of agents, it works. And so if you put a marketing plan in place, if you have um, your conversion, lead conversion skills and lead generation skills in place, it's just going to increase that business. So Zach is going to start that again September 7th. If you want to sign up, please let me know. And we really want you to commit to the full 12 weeks. Yeah, to miss a class or two, we, that's fine. But we really don't want people coming for like four classes and not coming in we want to always. Okay. Um, October 22nd is the wine tour at this back. And, uh, and, and there will be more water on the bus. And uh, we'll see. But um, I'll send you more info on that for anyone who's newer. This is an all day event. Do not plan to do anything after. You might not have to the office. You might not want to plan anything the next day. <laughs> Teams, some of your lenders and your title reps will probably ask if you play golf to, to join teams, but we do have that event that's an annual Children's Miracle Network um, golf tournament. Any questions on me? Well, I got one thing. How do you say? Um, we're still trying to recruit grow the office, get back some of the stuff we lost with the with the team that left. And um, so I want to ask y'all if y'all would work a deal with an agent and they say, hey, you know, are you happy with a remix? You know. Throw our name out there and give me their contact information. And I'll reach out to them if um, if I get them in the door and if you help me get them in the door, we might have some conversation. So uh, just trying to work on some of this. I need more talk to Rich about it.
Yes, before I started here, you guys did fun stuff like t shirts and hats or like things that they have. So it's something like that where you can really go and um, show up our office because, let's face it, there's a lot of different remaxes that were how many of you got a, a referral from another Remax office this year? April, did you get a referral? About two. Okay, so, but I mean, that's the thing. There are people moving from other Remax that know Remax agents in other states, and those Remax agents are looking for agents in our town because so many people are coming here. So, this is a great way to connect to those people. Yeah, if you go to Vegas, you will get this. You go to I mean, we're up the top end of like the country like, where people are migrating to Texas. So, I mean, I think Bobby, how, when did you go to Vegas last? How long ago? La the last time? Yeah. Two years ago. And when, how much business have you got? Oh, I always say I've been going, I've done maybe like four or five times since the last 10 years. And I get a referral at least one every year. Yeah. yeah. So, it's true. Um, they will like put something out. You can go online and secure it, but I think they usually do like a link and you can secure it through the link. Yeah, they do that. block. Tony? So for those of you that look for flights. Clean your cookies on Monday. Southwest rips out those notices for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those rebates or whatever they do, but clean the cookies off your phone and clean the cookies off the computer and you'll always see the, the uh, updated version of your flights and the cheaper versions of those flights if you use Southwest or any airlines. Travel tips by Tony. <laughs> Did you have anything else you wanted to discuss, Rich? Um, no. Okay. Okay, just two really quick um, things. We have um, yeah, Hi, Karen's here with the video, so we're Hi. just gonna let her talk um, for two minutes. For I promise y'all. Hi everyone, I'm Hi. Karen Schaefer, Presidio Title. Thank you so much, Frankie. Oh my gosh, she's doing great. She's she's yeah, she's doing better. Yeah, we. She was a little sick, but she's back and running. We all, one thing at Presidio, we're a team. Um, we have two offices, one down in Alamo Heights at Broadway, and we have one at Bitters and Blanco. We've got a great group of closers. Tammy's one of our awesome closers, and but we all, we all join in. We all, you know, I'm a notary. I was closing people. We do whatever we can to get the job done. Um, we're local, we're small. We'd love the opportunity to work with those who we've not worked with. I want to apologize for the lunch today because oh, I ordered um, a sandwich tray for 25 people and I well, got it and I was like, I don't know. Well, not more than people are going to be. It's kind not of more than 25 told me they were. I know, but today. I put that because so. there's not. I, I, I promise you, if you didn't get a sandwich, let me know and I'll buy you lunch because I feel terrible. I brought some veggies and some fruit and some cookies and chips too, but I hope everyone gets a sandwich. So I'm sorry for that, y'all. I know. Um, I don't know who they're feeding there at HUB. I'm like, what? Are, like, this is how big the sandwich is. So I apologize in advance. But thank you for your business. For those of you who are using Presidio, we know there's a lot of title companies at the end of the day. And it really is about service. And we've been around 16 years. We genuinely care about you and your clients. When we get a contract in, I'm on the phone calling the buyer's agent, saying, I'm leaving here and going to pick up two checks. We'll do CFI. We just want to make sure that the transition's smooth. We're all on the same page. You have my cell phone number. I'll leave it here for you guys. Um, you know, and we know some, we appreciate loyalty too. We know a lot of you already have title companies you've been working with for years and we respect that because we have that same situation. But if there is an opportunity to possibly put us on the buyer side or just, you know, add a title company, we'd love that opportunity. So thank, thank you so you much, you guys. I'm going to leave my cards for you guys. And if you didn't get a sandwich, please let me know. And I promise I'd love to buy you lunch. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We do have a really fun CE class. If anyone needs CE, we do have a fun CE. Next Friday, it's at Paisano's from 2.30 to 5. I'll send you the okay. flyer. It's $30 if you need CE, free if you don't, but it's, a, it's an event planning wine tasting. So for those of you who like uh, event planning more wine, like, uh, oh, 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 it's awesome. I know. I'm looking forward to it. We might just have to have one here. 
You know, and we've actually can line that up too. Yeah. If that's something you guys want to do, we would love to do that for you guys too. All right, bye guys. Um, and then we have one more quick um, speaker. Some of you might, well, hopefully a lot of you recognize Shima. Hi. Um, I'll just take a couple of minutes. Thank you so much, Rich, Christy, Frankie, for having me just take a couple of minutes to share my invention. For those of you that don't know, um, during the pandemic, this little sous chef helped me start a new business. So Ava, Nana, and Papa's Paws is a gourmet doggy tree bakery. And Ava helps me bake and decorate and package and sell sometimes all of the goodies. So she's going to share with you a little custom cookie that we created just for Remax. Oh, for those of you that have dolls and if there's not enough here, um, I will bring more. But if you could raise your hand and Ava will hand that out while I can keep talking. So I'm going to leave some flyers and also a... Um, a little forward for those that are interested. And some of the agents, I know Michelle, is she here today? Is She's not. Here? Michelle, okay. Uh, Michelle will let us know that some of your baskets for closing this. So that's really what I'm looking to show you today. Of some of the creative things that we can do for those people that have buyers that move into homes and they have dogs, maybe they don't have kids, maybe the dogs are their fur babies, like a lot of us know. Um, people humans have that. So we can create customized gifts based on the kind of dog that they have with them. Oh, I like it with my way to stand up to the sheets. Um, and then little additional things like you know, you know, with dog in black sayings, uh, tea towels, toys for the dog. So we can do customized um uh goodie baskets in a variety of ways so basically what i ask people to do is just give me their their price point and a little info about the buyer um their dogs and then we can kind of customize something based upon your price point and uh they'll be delivered here for free i won't charge any delivery fee for our remax family and this is what not being included because in order for me to sell a basket that has wine, my son, who's a server and bartender, reminded me that I would need to have a TV license. I don't need another license. So uh, what I can do is create the rest of the basket, and then you can add a bottle of wine, um, this bottle of wine or beer, it could be like this. But we could do something like that as well. And then I package for you. So those are just a couple of things that I wanted to show you today. Um, if you have um, buyers that have cats, we also do cat treats. I have one flavor right now, but there is cat treats available. Um, and um, if you personally are interested in buying any uh, goodies for your fur babies, then uh, let us know. Uh, we offer a Vets with Pets program for those of you that are military. It's 10% discount that we offer. And uh, we do special events for, um, um, for fundraising. If you've got people that are into fundraising where we give back money uh, based upon the, the uh, amount of product that's sold. I have a few folders here with uh, samples of the items that we offer, as well as our story. And also uh, the license. I'm a proud member of the Go Texan as well, which means everything is made right here in the Texas Hill Country. And uh, I am a licensed and registered dog treat baker. So, yes, there is a license that we have. So, I have to submit all of my uh, recipes for a lab analysis. On the back of each recipe is the whole lab analysis, all of the ingredients. They're all healthy, natural preservative free so all of the ingredients are what we put in our bellies that go into the dogs and uh some of ava's favorites are the doggy brownies which she actually shares with our fur babies and has a little tea party so all healthy ingredients so i'll leave these things up front as well as a little flyer of how you can uh, learn about how our business got started and uh, anything i can do to help you have a a nice celebratory transaction with your new buyers. We'd love to help out. Thank you. Thank you. And they're a little relaxed. So, yeah. Yes. All right.
Everybody? All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Hello.